Hi everyone, my name is Brooke O'Connell. I am a registered dietitian nutritionist at Optimum Nutrition. Uh, as a registered dietitian, I'm trained to counsel people on food and nutrition. And at Optimum Nutrition, I actually work in the research and development department, or we also call it R&D. And uh, one of the tasks that I have there is just helping to uh, consult on some of the development of our sports nutrition products. Uh, so you may be familiar with some of our most popular products like um, ON Optimum Nutrition Way Gold Standard, 100% Way Gold Standard, or uh, some of the Amino Energy products. We do have a few uh, different types of formats. Um, or, you know, this might be something that's completely new to you. And we, we do understand that it can be a little bit confusing, uh, maybe even a little bit intimidating for some people. Uh, so our goal today is to, you know, help provide some information for you about nutritional supplements, talk about a few products and their benefits, and then address some of those common questions that people might have about supplements. And I'm joined by Maria Barova today, who is a certified personal trainer and is also here to ask me some of those common questions uh, when it comes to supplements. So with that, we can get started. Hello everyone, we're gonna jump right into the question. So one of the first common questions about supplements is why might someone be using supplements? What are they supplementing? Yeah, uh, so you know, there's a variety of reasons why I think people are going to be turning to supplements. Um, for the most part though, I you know, quite literally think about supplements as something that's going to supplement my diet or help me to meet my estimated nutrition needs. And so, you know, an example of that might be protein supplements. Someone may choose to include a protein supplement just to help them, you know, meet their estimated protein needs. Awesome. And then who can use supplements? Is supplements made just for bodybuilders? Uh, yeah, so supplements can be incorporated into most people's diets, I would say. Um, you know, just depends on the goals that you might have. I know for some of us, we're probably going to think of those more extreme athletes, uh, like bodybuilders when, when we're thinking about supplements. Um, but you know, there's, there's all different types of supplements on the market and they fall into different benefit categories as well, where I think that, you know, it could benefit a wide range of people. Uh, again, it just kind of depends on your own individualized goals around nutrition and, and your activity goals. And I always think it's important to, to make sure that uh, you consult with your healthcare provider uh, before you start anything, uh, just to get some more individualized advice. Awesome. And what are some of the most commonly used supplements? Yeah, um, so I think when we, when we think about most commonly used supplements, uh, multivitamins come to mind right away, uh, just because I think it's kind of like an all-encompassing solution for a lot of people. Um, I also do think about protein supplements as a pretty common one too, just because um, convenience factor is there, it's pretty easy to incorporate it. And then again, you know, if you're trying to meet your, your estimated protein needs, it, it's kind of an easy way to do that. And what are amino acids and why are they put into these supplement products? Yeah, um, so amino acids are, are the building blocks of protein. Uh, there's different types of protein sources out there that are going to provide different uh, types of amino acids for us. Um, we'll oftentimes see amino acids that are either naturally occurring in a supplement or that have been added. Uh, and naturally occurring just means that, you know, it's naturally uh, found in, in that protein source. Gotcha. Um, and then I also just wanted to highlight too, I think it's important to know that uh, there are essential amino acids and there are non-essential amino acids out there. Uh, and the essential ones are more that we'll be focused on just because uh, we do need to obtain these through our diet. Gotcha. And so what are the different types of uh, kinds of protein from whey, plant-based, isolate, hydrolyzed, and casein? There's so many on the market. What's the difference between all of them? Yeah. Um, yeah. So some of those that you named, uh, you know, we're going, they're going to fall into either a plant-based option or a, uh, an animal-based source. And so we can start with um, animal-based, you know, obviously these are coming from an animal source and, uh, you know, one, one of the more common or the common types of animal proteins that we often find in supplements are going to come from those milk proteins. And so you'll see like whey or casein. Uh, and the difference with these, you know, compared to a plant-based source is that they're naturally going to contain all of those essential amino acids in sufficient quantities um, that I mentioned previously. Whereas a plant-based uh, protein source, it, you know, is going to have um, amino acids in there, but 
uh, you may see different combinations of, of plant-based sources, such as um, like nut or pea, maybe rice proteins. Uh, and so these, these different combinations are going to provide a different profile of amino acids um, to the consumer. And how do you re uh, recommend that they are used and how do you know which one is best to be used? Yeah, um, a really good question. I think it really just, again, kind of goes back to, you know, what your individual goals are, uh, what your individual preferences are too. Um, you know, obviously people have different types of diets and different styles of diets. And so, you know, really what works best in your diet is um, what I would recommend. Gotcha. And then, so what about supplements for energy? Uh, what, do, uh, what is your information on pre-workout? How do you also choose the right one for you from the amino energies and the pre-workouts that are out there? Yeah. Uh, so I would say, you know, with most supplements or with all supplements really and energy supplements included, just make sure that you do your homework, uh, you know, prior to uh, selecting a product, just because uh, when we are talking about energy supplements uh, with ad adequate amounts of caffeine, uh, we can get different types of claims from that. So it can help to support energy or focus. Um, and I know the amino energy uh, line with uh, optimal nutrition actually has five grams of amino acids in there to help support muscle recovery too. So there's like so many uh, different things that can come in an energy supplement. And then if you are going to be using it for a pre-workout or something like that, uh, you know, again, you, you're going to want to look at the timing when you are consuming that supplement. So uh, generally we're going to say uh, 30 to 60 minutes prior to your workout, make sure you're, you're taking that so the caffeine can uh, get into your system. Uh, but yeah, I think with energy, with energy products, again, you need to be sensitive too about uh, the timing that you're taking it just because some people don't tolerate uh, caffeine after a certain hour of the day. Do you, do you ever take uh, any types of energy supplements? Yeah, so I actually have an amino energy right here. I like to have them as uh, a pick me up in the middle of the day, um, but I try to limit how much caffeine I consume during the day. So if I'm taking pre-workout before I'm training or um, before work, I like to drink one of uh, the canned amino energies or I add some to water. Um, yeah. Try to limit it because sometimes I can overdo it. And if I drink it too late in the day, it does keep me up at night, but it's about yeah. finding that personal preference and balance and what you can tolerate. I know people can tolerate much more and some people can't tolerate as much so i recommend as well just starting off a little slowly and then building up your tolerance if you if you see fit yeah i think that's a great recommendation yeah and then what do you think about collagen i know that's uh, in the market as well and there's so many different kinds such as joint support collagen and beauty collagen can you talk a little bit more about those supplements yeah uh so collagen is a type of protein and it's far it's actually found in cartilaginous regions of the animal um, most collagens are going to be considered an incomplete protein source. Uh, so that means that, that that amino acid profile is you know lacking in one or more of those essential amino acids. Um, but yeah, there's all different types of, uh, there's, there's 28 different kinds of collagen actually. The most common ones uh, that you'll probably find in supplements are going to be types one, two, and three. And uh, those actually provide different benefits to the body too, or they help to support uh, different, different things in the body. And so type one is, is usually going to be uh, associated with supporting healthy skin and nails. And then types two and three are going to help support healthy joints and cartilage. Uh, so it, again, yeah, you'll probably find different combinations. I would encourage you to, you know, maybe look, if you are taking a collagen supplement, look at the types that are in there uh, just to see what it's doing for you. And who would you recommend collagen to? Um, you know, I think it, I think it really depends. Like uh, people that are pretty active, I, I, I do think that, you know, it might be something that you want to consider, um, you know, if you are looking to incorporate collagen into your body or into your diet. Um, you know, I think I think that it could work with, with many different groups of people. Okay, wonderful. What should I look for when I'm looking for a good supplement? How, what, how do you know what's good quality and bad quality? What do you look for when you have a supplement in hand? Yeah, um, so I think, it can be challenging to know, uh, you know, what what supplements to pick because there are so many out there, um, and I know that it's hard also to just look at a label of a supplement and and try to make your decision based on that too. Uh, so my recommendations with this would just be to to pick a brand and that you trust and kind of stick with it, and then also um, I usually tell people to look for those third party certifications, uh, you know, that are it, it will be on the label. So. 
Uh, some examples of that might be informed choice or informed sport. Um, NS NSF certification you might also find on some supplements. Uh, you know, that, that extra certification might be, um, you know, an indicator of, of the, the quality standards that it has to go through. And then one of the last questions is where can I look to buy supplements? What's the best place to purchase these things? Yeah, I feel like uh, these days I see supplements all over the place. <laughs> I, I go to the grocery store, they're there, um, you know, just like general merchandise re retailers, I see them there too. Um, you know, even just going directly to the, the brand that you're supporting, just going directly to their website or other online retailers, you know, you can find, you can find supplements um, pretty easily, I think. Well, that wraps up most of the questions for um, all things supplements. Thank you so much for answering them for us today. Yeah, thanks for, thanks for joining us. Remember that good nutrition along with exercise is important for overall fitness and wellness. Uh, you can learn more about Optimum Nutrition products at OptimumNutrition.com and find more educational videos like this one at onbuildingbetterlives.com. Thank you. Thank you.